How does it feel to have a lab in the ocean? Um, I'm an oceanographer. I love going to sea, strangely. The typhoon was bearing down on the island. Typhoon Infa. And so we were forced to leave port a day early. And the first few days are, well, basically hell. Luckily, we got that done before we left. I don't think it would have gone particularly well with, you know, several seasick oceanographers trying to set up this plastic bubble. It's a long trip, but uh, for me it's always a little adventure. Every time I go to sea, I really like it. Life is starting to get regular at sea. Ten minutes of science, everybody. On this cruise, we're in a place called the Mariana Back Arc. So this is what it would look like if you could see through the ocean and see the seafloor. The Mariana Back Arc is where the upper plate here is spreading. So the part to the right is moving to the right, part to the left is moving to the left, causing the hydrothermal vents that we're hunting for. We like to understand what their impact is on ocean chemistry, seafloor biology. The ocean and the earth, the solid earth, are exchanging heat exchanging chemicals, exchanging perhaps even life continuously wherever you can find hydrothermal venting. 70% of the earth is seafloor and the percentage of that seafloor that we've explored in any way for any sort of hydrothermal venting is minuscule. I mean we're talking two to three percent of probably the earth's surface total. I mean what can you derive and understand about a whole system when you've spent so little time looking at it, you know? The incredible chemistry that the organisms at hot vents must possess in order to survive in these very, what would be toxic to almost every other life form on Earth. Uh, the enzymes, the uh, proteins, the various tools that microbes use to survive in these environments may turn out to be really valuable. Towing our sensors behind the ship, moving the CTD package up and down through the water column, through about 400 meters of the water above bottom, this sort of paints us a two-dimensional picture of where there are hydrothermal chemicals. By tracing those plumes back to their most concentrated part, you found out where on the seafloor within a kilometer or two the vents were. You know, the first few days of the cruise, we were doing tows and not finding much. You can't help but start thinking, what if it's like this every day? <laughs> Today was an exciting day. It's the first time we've really seen a big hydrothermal plume. Really interesting part of the back arc, just whopping signals. So we can send Sentry down to do fine scale maps, get a better picture of where the venting is. It can go to the seafloor untethered. It uh, creates these beautiful detailed maps of the seafloor with sonar. It can take pictures of, of the bottom and it has all the sensors we need. Uh, well, first of all, I'll always keep the number of recoveries equal to the number of launches. <laughs> Secondarily, uh, don't hit the ship and make sure that you finish with the same number of people that you started with. Everybody pretty much has to do the right thing uh, all the time or somebody gets hurt or you damage a multi-million dollar piece of equipment. When Sentry came back on board after that dive, our jaws just dropped because there was this new lava flow on the seafloor, and that was completely unexpected. And in this location, this is particularly interesting because we don't expect there to be eruptions very often, that most once every hundred years. We have been lucky enough to have some old data that was collected here a couple of years ago, and we've been able to compare that to data that we collected on the Falkor. And some of those areas, we see these pillow lava flows over 120 meters deep. So that's pretty amazing when you think of it. It's, it's a 40-story building that we're looking at. To find what was something that erupted in the last two years was dynamite. How do I feel about this plume? Oh, I'm very disappointed about this plume because it knocked me off of my throne. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I previously held the cruise record. So we have this bedding pool going on. I was the only one who picked this segment, so <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good. We're here to find the big plumes, and so I actually feel pretty good about this plume. So it just makes me wonder what we're going to find tomorrow. Once we get a good idea where the vent site from our Toyos or from the AUV Sentry, the idea is to take the vertical cast, stop the ship, lower it right down to where you think the best chance of seeing the vent is, and then sampling those fluids coming out of the seafloor at the highest concentration you could do. It was 
obvious that we were right over a vent because we saw really big optical signals all the way to the seafloor. So I think we were like right on top of a chimney. The temperature of the water near the seafloor was a degree or two higher than the ambient. That doesn't sound like very much, but the, temp the fluids come out at maybe 100 degrees or 200 degrees in the seafloor, and you think that's hot. But you can hold my distance to you away from a 300 degree vent and you wouldn't notice any heat. The water is diluted so quickly by the ocean that normally one one hundredth of a degree is a big deal. Here we're getting a full degree, which means the water has been diluted by only a factor of 10 or 100 as opposed to a factor of 1,000. The crew member who picked that part of the segment in, in the bedding pool was in the room while we were uh, making the CTD cast, and he, he was rooting for it. Nice you know, all we invited to spend the reward. <laughs> and got some really good samples of the fluids from those vents. I look at a certain type of helium, and this type is not formed anywhere on Earth anymore. And this special type of helium is only degassed by volcanic eruptions or hydrothermal vents. The helium content and the iron content and you know, hydrogen, methane, all those things, it's, yes. it's very important to see the whole picture and get good samples. You look at that! <laughs> Saving the best for last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on the, pretty much the last day of science, we put our package down again and we, we towed it along this section of the back park and we found hydrothermal activity again. And when I looked at this section, I had no expectation that there'd be hydrothermal activity there. And yet on the last day, we found more exciting places to visit next year with the ROV. It's such a complex environment. The problems are so hard, the areas are so remote that you have to have the scientists who understand what the important questions are and how to arrive at the answers to those questions. And even there you require chemists and biologists and geologists and geophysicists and many other disciplines, engineers who can uh, conceive of new technological means to arrive at the data that the scientists require. You need technicians who can service that technology and keep it working. You need the ship's crew because without them you're not actually going anywhere. You need people on deck who know how to get things in and out of the ocean safely. And at most any one person is going to probably have two, maybe three of those skills. And certainly not any more than that. Because to solve the problems that we're talking about out here, we're talking about world-class experts in every one of those fields. We're talking about the absolute best people in the world and you just can't be the best in the world at more than one or two things. <laughs> a volcanic eruption represents renewal of the solid earth. When you have an eruption, you have new material. There's nothing on that other than hard, hot rock. Will life come back and populate those new surfaces, those new substrates? Will there be new hydrothermal activity that creates a new oasis? And will, how will that be populated? And how long will it take for it to be populated? These are the kind of questions you can start to ask when you have a new eruption on the sea floor. So thank you for listening to our story and thank you for joining us on this expedition. Mm -hmm.